it's not so bad. It only took yeah. us, you know, four hours to get through a quarter of what we were planning. I mean, considering all of it so far is pretty much fun. <laughs> True. Exactly what we've been hoping for. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm not True. opposed to con continuing it. Right, I am gotta... I'm definitely here for that. Stream the like. Bye, host. Yeah, it's getting there. Wolf Mallard. having a hard time. Yeah. I'll just take a second. As it goes. There we go. I see you started. Lovely. Lovely. you would love go. to see it. So let's see. Uh, we get, we do. So I think that a previous video or whichever one that has the most of exploring the grave would probably work best here. Yes. Let me actually see. Yeah. I had another video that might work. I captured some footage from a shield playthrough that I was doing. Let's see, okay. I just need it to fit properly within the screen. Yep. <laughs> At some point, I will get good at this. This is just part of the... Beautiful, indeed. We are master streamers, technically. Oh, yes. Yes. Womp. Womp. Me. Me. There we go. I got it. You really it gotta lean forward uh, in your seat. Take the gamer stance. Uh, <laughs> For people with OCD. Uh, like, yeah, take out all extraneous information. Yep. Is this the right one? I think it no. would be, yeah. I uh, don't think so. He's not actually playing the game. Again, this, this is all stuff that's been recorded. <laughs> I, 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 I will play the game in the future. I guarantee that. Um, yeah. I'll play it on stream. But because we're talking so in-depth, I want to be focused on that. And so I will uh, stick to having just some pre-recorded stuff on for now. So we will switch over to, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, if I want to do think that, of that, if That's I want to do that, I will just get um, Black Knife Tish and oh, just yeah. summon her for everything because she annihilates the game. Black Knife Tish and Rivers of Blood. And then yeah. just, like, Casually walking around. <laughs> her um her HP thing, her uh, specifically like the knife projectile thing she does is percent based on HP. So for large health bar bosses, she is exceptional. Yeah, the and if you use the black knife yourself, if you start out with that special attack the uh ash of war there we go found the word if you start with that it knocks off 10 percent of the boss health yeah <laughs> nothing to go with my spirit ash here yeah spirit ash here is just exceptionally good 
You know what? It might it might as well be just as good a time as any to talk about Spirit Ashes and their effect on the game. Yeah, I I was just thinking that, and I can't believe I didn't have that as a point in my list. Like, if it's the heavier you go with armor, the better he gets his PV mob stats. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. oh, oh boy, uh, Spirit Ashes are a very interesting, very, very, very interesting addition to <coughs> yeah, the general gameplay mechanic of, of, of a Souls game, especially how these games are developed and the way the uh, enemies react to the player. Yeah. The Spirit Ashes are kind of broken, I think. It's like... I feel like FromSoft put it in, but then didn't account for players actually, like... Using them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are... They break the game wide open. It's, uh... But the weird thing is that... Not like, good. Specific Ashes do that, too. And other ones are just okay to not worth using a large majority of the time. Yeah. Like that blob spirit ash, the thing that you could see in the Yurnia a bunch that just spews poison everywhere. Yes. They they're good for like a couple of things, mainly just taking boss aggro or the general aggro of you're being mobbed. And then tanking a lot of damage for you. That's uh, that's about it. I, I don't know that they're like that useful beyond that. Not using it just handing your capping yourself is actually yes, it's accurate. Considering that they do nothing to uh, increase the difficulty of the boss otherwise, like summons would. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand why that is like <clears throat> to have the boss suddenly gain 10% of its health in the middle of a fight if you're fighting it and you're like oh man I'm running low on health I just I gotta pull in a summon so that uh, I can survive and so you you know summon the the wandering noble ashes or stormhawk dean who's like one of my favorites it's like you can't as the developer, you can't predict when someone's going to do a thing. And so having the boss health bar account for it is tricky because it will absolutely feel unfair to the player for the boss to suddenly have 10% more health. When Especially as far as the player knows, they're just using a tool. Yeah. Like, summons are just given to you the the ash spirit summons they're just given to you essentially as a another tool in your toolkit it is just a weapon for you to use you can upgrade it and everything but yeah honestly yeah. you're right that's the same argument you can have with uh summons just player summons as well with the added benefit of course the summons being that they can have specialized builds and intelligent responses to bosses yeah but yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely and you know what is it banished knight oleg he will carry you through the first half of the game he will absolutely carry you long as you don't go to red main castle because he doesn't really do well with a lot of the stuff in kaled and specifically if you go to the castle like before the festival but Aha, yes. <laughs> he will he will carry you to halfway. So yeah, I think Spirit Summons have two really big problems. They can they introduce a huge disparity with the discussion of the game and how people feel about certain encounters. And you'll see yeah. this with Melania a whole bunch. Where they have people <gasps> saying, Oh, she was fucking easy, just use mimic terror. Or Black Knife Teach. What, what are you guys complaining about? Yeah. And it's the same reason why people don't want difficulty settings. 
in a different package. And even why FromSoft doesn't want difficulty settings because it completely changes the conversation depending on what you do. Yeah. Like Dark Souls 1, even if you summon for it, like there are things that you can't summon for. There's stuff that you have to do yourself. You are getting the same experience as everybody else who plays the game. You can make it easier for yourself by grinding and doing a whole bunch of stuff to strengthen your build. But you are at the at the base end of it, you are getting the same experience as everybody else playing the game. And when you use Ash Spirits, you are not getting the same experience as somebody who isn't using them. It is a totally different it's a totally different game to play with them versus playing without them. It, essentially, yeah. And I feel like if, if it's going to be a different experience anyway, I feel like it we like leaning into that and building the use of Spirit Ashes around it being like a different way to play the game would be the best route to go. Probably. Or alternatively, just making just like significantly weakening the higher tier ones across the board and attempting to balance them all around this idea of moderate usefulness. Yeah. It it kind of feels in the same way that uh like life gems are totally broken and like destroy any sense of balance in Dark Souls 2 as to health and enemy encounters and stuff like that. It, uh, it it is. I genuinely just remove them. Yeah. Yeah. You're just <laughs> given. You're given this tool that breaks the game if you decide to use it, and why would you not use it? And so. The game isn't balanced around it. Mm -hmm. And there are some encounters that specifically seem to anticipate you using in Dark Souls 2 Life Gems and in this game the Ash Spirits like there are some things that they anticipate you doing that I would argue the duo Crucible Knights or the Crucible the Knight duo... and the Misbegotten yeah. most of the duo fights in the game have they feel like they in large part rely on you using some other uh, body in in the fight in order to tank aggro at yeah. any given time absolutely and you have some like the lone wolf ashes they're not that strong they don't do a lot of damage but they take aggro really well and so you gotta you gotta wonder am i getting the same experience by using them versus not using them so in short of removing them and i mentioned this of course to you before is my idea for rebalancing the use of spirit ashes would be uh reworking their use case to encourage a sort of like like a po and a pokemon team not really a pokemon team but like this real-time strategy kind of thing where each spirit ash would involve a certain use case and you'd be allowed to summon multiple of a type during a fight in order to build your own personal army that each individually while being very weak could together take out a boss and the whole gameplay idea behind them would be just the fun of seeing what kind of strategy can you make with your personal army yeah i i think there's something to be said for that i think there's also like when i first envisioned it i thought it was more of the uh final fantasy type summoning thing where it costs you a lot of mana but you summon like a dragon and it does one big attack that does a whole bunch of damage but like the uh how renala uses the spirit summons during her yeah basically thing. That was what I thought the Spirit Summons was going to be. And it's very much not that. 
And I don't know if that would have even been better, but it might have been more balanced. Yeah. Because they could essentially work as a huge special attacks. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. And it, it would be something that even somebody who's not a magic user would be able to make use of. Buzzer's extra stuff. I, I, yeah, I can definitely see that too. Yeah. That is. Considering that's basically what the dragon communion stuff is, is summoning dragon head to do a specific attack. True. Very I can true. Still see it, I can still see it working that way, but I can I can definitely see how that would just feel like spoons extra steps. Hmm. So it's really all about like building a sort of gameplay style around them without pressing in on other characters. Because at the moment it really feels like every character is supposed to use them, but if you do use them and you use the right ones <laughs> Because there have been wrong choices for the best ashes in the game, then you feel like you're losing out on the experience. Yeah, definitely. And I've done a full playthrough without using them at all. And I did every boss that I could find while I was doing that. And it was painful for some of them. Yeah. It's it's deciding what is the level of power that you want it to have and what is the level of punishment that the player receives for doing it that way. And I uh I don't I don't I don't know what that line is yet. And clearly FromSoft didn't either, so they didn't really try to balance it. They just said, "Here's a tool that you can use." Mhm. Mm because you have no yeah. idea how the spirit ash itself is going to behave. Yeah. Like, they have be... no way of accurately reading or reacting to attacks. So it's a dice roll, really, of whether they take damage or not. Yeah. I could see that work. It was taking 5% of the damage. Yeah. It's no help to maintain more of a risk reward without being overtly, overtly punishing. Hey, look, you got the spirit color bell. <laughs> you yes. need to get some keeping and some energy summoning it. Mm -hmm. I would also imagine there would be some kind of uh, a meta that would also be introduced with uh, summons that can avoid the most damage. But I, I, I can still see it working can, since um, both killing the boss effectively and avoiding damage then would be about as important to the player. Different percent damage taken, that's true. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of ways that you could go about trying to balance the system <clears throat> and trying to make it seem reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, Aurelia is absolutely supposed to tank damage for you. And you, maybe Jokers. sometimes give poison. Maybe. If they can, like, yeah, stack, it up, stack up enough. Yeah. Do you have an idea here about, like, um, including your risk reward mechanic to single summons? Or something like building up the idea of summons? as a like like a um a, a group strategy kind of thing and it's hard for I... me to see other alternatives to this mainly because of <laughs> how easily they can break how a boss reacts and the flow of a boss to the individual player if they want to continue fighting it a classic way yeah i'm i'm more inclined i think to either find a way to limit them into being you know the spells with extra steps or to make it so that you can summon them and keep them with you but lower the amount of damage that they do so you know th they have specific functions 
I won't say unanimously lower the amount of damage because I can also see if there's a way that you can make one hide from something so it cannot take aggro, but it can do a lot of damage. It just, you know, skeletons shoots an arrow can, every once in a while. Skeletons can kind of do that. Yeah. Since they, yeah. It's like if, if you could make them so that each one has uh, more specific utility to it. It's like this is really good for tanking a lot of damage. Like if you could have Turtle Pope as one, you know, and you summon him and he just kind of sits there and takes aggro and lasts for like but that's abusing the 30 turtle seconds. Pope. It is. It is absolutely abusing the Turtle Pope. Maybe if they die, they take 50% of your HP. Hmm. He, I, maybe that could potentially work. I don't know if I would want to do that, though, because of the unreliability in when they will die or when they won't. And oftentimes, people will use them to get out of an encounter. So if I'm at low health and I'm in gate front and I'm having trouble, I'll just summon up the wolves and then run. But if they die and I haven't made it to the site of grace yet, like... I don't know. There's there's potential there. Would it be worth it to have the health loss when they die? Or just have you have to soak up the health loss to summon them in the first place? Because, like, that's how the Mimic tier works. Well, the Mimic tier is also already, like, completely overpowered in its own way. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. I don't think the health loss on summoning it is entirely that much of a drawback since you can since you control when you take that health loss. Yeah. And it's really just a flash that's the cost instead of the health. If that makes sense. Yeah. The unpredictability to when they die is uh, at once a drawback and then also I think in a sort of gain in balancing it since you don't really know when that will happen but it's part of the strategy, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's definitely the risk-reward thing. It's like, I yeah. have no idea when they'll die and when I will potentially take that damage. And HP damage over time while they're summoned is interesting. It's interesting. I don't know how well that would work. Like, that would certainly stop people from wanting to use them, but I don't necessarily want to do that. I just want to, like, balance them better. I'm fine with them being there. And it's a huge help for people that just want to casually fight a boss. So I, I think it's useful for the player to have that as an option. Yeah, because my main problem with like attempting to balance them, especially downward, just ne decreasing their effectiveness, is that eventually they reach a point where while they may not uh, diminish the boss experience too much, they're not, they don't feel like that much of a help either. They don't feel like they make a difference in the long run. Yeah, that is that is certainly a problem. Or just in general, like a, a less sort of significance. Unarmed horseback combat is a lot of fun. I highly recommend trying it with the Kaiden dudes. It's great. Just like <laughs> punching them from horseback. Beat the I... fucking shit out of them on top of the door. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of great. Um, I was really enjoying it for this shield build that I did. Because I was uh, trying to use a great shield. It's like my blocking, but then use the bleed shield for actually doing damage ah yes bleed shield <laughs> hmm. it's not a spectacularly effective method but uh, it works it is it, it's very fun <laughs> in a silly way doing it on horseback oh yeah ooh 
Spirit Ashes. Mm -hmm. I think in general, I would definitely not be opposed to outright deleting the Mimic Terror Spirit from the game, as much as that might suck. I Because it is an inventive Spirit Ash, but I really think its concept means, by most cases, it's just going to be very powerful. Yes. I, the I don't necessarily kind of... want to totally get rid of it, but I'm totally for limiting it in any kind of capacity yeah. and uh, making it very fucking hard to get. Because right now it's not. Like, Cause... you just walk down the right hallway and open a chest and you have it. Yeah. The mere existence of all means you should use it. Yeah. Because if you have a build that can destroy a boss, you can double that up immediately using the Mimic Jerk. Yes. Indeed, which is a problem for anybody using the pizza cutter. It's like, <laughs> if you're using the pizza cutter and you summon the Mimic Tier, whatever boss you're fighting is just going to die. Like, that will shred Melania. Like, its just strategy becomes her. your strategy, but just more of it. Like, yeah, it becomes very hard to consider the aspects of the other tiers because they can only do this one thing. Yeah. Well, I think that's great for balancing. I think the mimic tier kind of overrides it to to a large degree. I I wonder if like a time limit on the mimic tier might help that problem. It's like you can summon it, but it only lasts for, you know, 5 seconds. And so we would have to be able to change the AI to make it be super aggro on the boss for those 5 seconds, but then it goes away. And so if you want to summon it again, you have to take what is essentially, you know, <laughs> a, a hit. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? I saw I noticed that. That was hilarious. It it I was so confused. And it was hilarious in the moment Holy when shit. it happened. You're not dead. <laughs> I am somehow not dead. I'm pretty sure I survived this encounter because the giants, like I go around them enough that they kill each other. Oh, yeah, because we can't do that here. Oh, my God. Okay. So, uh, if anything, even if we don't change the Spirit Ashes that much, I think Mimic Tier should be just... Either cut or limited severely. Yes. It It is broken. The most broken, I think. Of the, of the Ashes that I have tried, most broken is, like, Mimic Tier, Black Knight Tish, Oleg, and then the five great shield dudes that you can get from Necron, Necron, oh, yeah. Necron, whatever it is. Um, like, they are all busted. They will absolutely destroy any sense of, like, good encounter design. <laughs> I, I would love to be able to introduce, uh, more fleshed out mechanic to spirit ashes as I think that would be really fun to introduce a sort of a personal army bit to them as as I've like laid out in detail before but at the same time it's also difficult as no matter what I think spirit ashes really fuzz that line of like one to one melee or an encounter being hard and then remaining consistently hard across strategies yeah and I'm I'm very open to the idea of like making a summoner class and trying to make it so that you can have ash spirits do most of your damage but it's very difficult to make that consistently hard like I think uh, Cinders realized that pretty early on and gave up most attempts at trying to balance that oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's funny how it, it uh, like parallels the experience Elden Ring currently has with Spear and Ashes yes some, it, in some cases by restriction but in other cases just down to sheer design yeah and I, I think that's just the the limitations of any sort of a system like that that you're going to run into. It's it's the inevitable. 
I could see something working where we meld some of these design ideas. Like, what if you were allowed to... Okay, so let me, let me start over from scratch. Like, what if Spirit Ashes were on the whole kind of kicked down pretty hard? But, like, a summoner class kind of thing came in where we introduced items that allowed you to summon more, but at the cost of, like, personal, um, like, health drawbacks, like, taking damage if you're if the ashes took damage or something like that yeah i i'm definitely like i can see that being a way of even just balancing the ashes in general yeah um because I, I like the idea of introducing these drawbacks and i like the idea of having uh, multiple spirit ashes work together as your main damage output if yeah. you as a player are then then accommodate that kind of gameplay through other drawbacks and it becomes its own uh kind of style that can work out yeah like we could uh make a talisman that says you know you can summon multiple spirits at once but at the cost of you know 25 percent of your health bar yeah and there's a, there can even be like different iterations of this kind of talisman that maybe offer more of the same benefits and different kinds of drawbacks yeah, like that you can follow this route along, however much you want to. But, just at your cost, you know, like yeah. you can have your ashes do all the damage you want for you, but you're going to be uh, dealing with other problems as a player. I like that idea. Yeah, definitely. Especially if it, especially if it means like for a base melee or any other kind of class, you can't summon one. But it's, you know, it, it's just going to be your buddy. It's not going to be your carrying knight through the entire game, pretty much. Yeah. And I I think that many players will enjoy just having, like, a very weak spirit that travels with them everywhere. It's like, mm -hmm. it can sometimes take some aggro for you, which is cool. It won't do a whole lot of damage. And it might even not have a whole lot of health but you know you can just bring him along because you think he's neato like i've i've used several of the ash spirits that i think are cool or funny even though they don't really do a lot yeah <laughs> like the monkey dudes the monkey dudes or sorry demi humans i think yeah the demi humans the wandering nobles the um noble uh sorcerer oh yeah <laughs> it's like they're they're just funny and they're cute and they're kind of silly and the reason why i keep coming back to allowing the player to use a multiple for some cost or whatever is because i think it would also help alleviate the um the problem of finding a spirit ash and not wanting to use it because you know you already have the best one in the game like why would you ever feel excited about finding another spirit ash if you already have the mimic tier or you've yeah. already set them on using black knight teeth if you found the one that you want to use every other reward of that type becomes irrelevant yeah pretty much for sure I, but uh... I think it being allowed to use multiple and being push to strategize more or present them with different use cases like this ash can be used everywhere in the overworld but maybe not in specific ash locations yeah that or something like be that done. or something like uh perfumer trisha i think she was one of the ashes that from designed with this idea in mind of like let's make ash spirits to do a thing because as soon as you summon her she will put the uh you know what's it called she'll use the magical fairy dust that coats you with the shield and yeah. ups your attack power like she's a support class summon that's that's mm. what she is and it works very well and i like that she doesn't it, it's she's not able to do a lot of damage oh, sorry she's she's not able to do a lot of damage but she can sometimes take aggro if we limit her ability to like block defensively 
then you know you can really have an interesting back and forth of having her as a support summon to help you and give you defense but you can't let her take aggro because she'll get smashed yeah and I like that, and it's a shame to me that often a lot of these assets will never be used because you found that one that everyone knows about that is just utterly broken, and you never have any other reason to pick another one. Like, why find a support class summon if you can just use the um, the mimic tier with maybe healing spells or something applied to it? Yep. Is that kind of thing. Like, the utility far outclasses any any other thing that could potentially be really fun to experiment with especially when you use one i i'm very interested to look into um what the mimic tears sort of cut content storyline was and Mm -hmm. if any of that can be restored and if it can't or it's like unreasonable to try to do that now maybe we can push the mimic tier like to be something found really really late game it's like you have maybe elden beast and melania left that's about it you know like that would be something at least maybe it's not a good answer but it keeps people from abusing it at the start of the game yeah (laughs) If it has a quest associated with it, maybe it can only be used in relevance to its quest stuff. Who knows? There's a lot of stuff you could do to balance Mimic Tier, especially if uh, combined with other uh, other ideas like we have. I think yeah. generally the idea of a summoner build that you can get into that will allow these to become more effective other than just reinforcing them and possibly if we can figure it out the ability to summon multiple would make spirit ashes themselves a much more engaging and interesting class other than summon this and you win yeah or summon this and you die because it kind of sucks pretty much Yeah. I definitely don't want to get rid of like that connection that people can have with their spirit ashes. Because I've seen a, a lot of like wholesome community content around well, the Mimic Chair or Black Knife Teach or any other that kind of thing where people feel really happy going through with their adventure buddy, you know? Yeah, and that's that's a reason why I want to make them show up whenever you rest at Sites of Grace. Oh yeah, along with Melina. Yeah. <laughs> oh that would be funny that would be awful that would be great i love that imagine oh, if you summoned boy. her for millennia with that oh boy Ten percent chance of me there i should find that that's good that would, who knows that would... maybe like the mimic tier could have like a relation thing with the player and if you get in a bad relation with them then they fight you it's an allegory for depression there you go. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm not sure if uh, the game will really support that sort of a thing, but it's worth a shot. Yeah. Because of uh, picking up crafting materials now, and I think we have like an overview of our thoughts on Spirit Ashes in general, despite yes. specifics, which can be figured out as we get into them. Yeah. How about materials and like crafting? Yeah. That's fun. Um, I hardly ever engage with the crafting system. Ever. And that's a shame. It is. I I think something can be done to make it better. It's like opening up what you can craft, opening up the utility of the things that you can craft already, and... Uh, letting you get more recipes sort of naturally yeah something something's got to be done because it is not also part of like the stats problem and also how uh recipes are distributed because one 
you're left very unsure of what these things do at a glance unless you like take the time to use one and see okay what does this do how does it do it fuck yep. <laughs> they're so funny I love congratulations these guys. water <laughs> I... okay but yeah yeah uh, anyway and there's a lot of useful things in the crafting system and a lot of useful things that probably should be in the crafting system. Yes. But the same is that, like Spirit Ashes, a lot of players will never really experience the things there that are very useful, like the meat buff items, or like the pots, or the perfumers, uh, uh weapons kind of things that you can get. Yes, the perfumer bottles are really interesting, and I would like to try to figure out how to make those more applicable yeah and maybe even make them like a weapon you can equip in a weapon slot maybe who knows because i love the idea of especially with seamless co-op opening up i think today right is it today if it is pretty today, sure I'm, I'm 27th let me uh check it out um, yeah hit up nexus and and tell me if it's on there but uh you know if you could build yourself as a perfumer class because perfumers i think are really interesting in this world oh they are yeah and it's oh, a yeah, shame it that the Publisher. player hell yeah i know uh i'm gonna oh, be downloading awesome. tonight <laughs> um, yeah it's it's a shame that the player really can't emulate that in a way that feels less clunky than here let me hit down on the d-pad a couple of times to scroll through and get to the right bottle oh nope yeah. i hit d-pad once too many times gotta go back through this is the same ui problem with spells but that's yeah yeah oh god it it absolutely is and i i don't know to fix that i guess you'd have to like accept directional inputs when you're casting the spell but uh, there's problem with any system. Yeah. The just... way you cycle through spells and things is very weird, and I'm not sure we can do anything about that. I don't so... think so. Not currently, anyway. No. So we're just going to have to kind of accept that it's janky, and I can improve the game in other ways here. Yeah. But I, I really like the perfumer stuff. I think that... Yes armor sets that you get for it look cool i think the lore behind them in the universe is really cool i i want to have the player be able to emulate that more and i want to open up the possibilities of the perfumer items because they're like doctors essentially traveling doctors in mm -hmm. universe i also just love the look of their attacks like the way they spread around like this magic fairy dust essentially yeah it's so cool yeah give 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 me more from soft <laughs> let me do more so for crafting in general i think one of the major things we can do to improve the system is help uh, distributing the way you obtain recipes in a more understandable way like you are able to uh figure out what you're likely to be getting and how it might be useful to you and obtain them in a more natural way that isn't just finding a random book and not even being sure what it unlocked until you find it in your inventory three days later yeah i'm i don't know because like the dumb way to solve that right is have a pop-up that says oh you can craft this and this now yeah but that would just get annoying so it's like how do we balance giving the player information without it being annoying and without them having to dig through their inventory menu to find it i would think maybe something like you know how, uh, like i mentioned this before the covenant system from cinders how you're able to like uh, obtain the recipes for something else you gained or a way to figure out, like, this is where I'm going to be getting recipes, and I want to do this in order to get more. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that has a lot of potential. 
it's like having people that specialize in certain types of recipes and so the more that you do for them the more stuff you give them whatever the more of that type they'll give you it's like i want to use uh sleep items i want to throw sleep bombs because this is metal gear solid baby rigid danger bitey jungle noodle absolutely so you know like having somebody that specializes in uh, sleep oriented craftable things and you can unlock or purchase or whatever the recipes for stuff from them that has a lot of potential mm -hmm. giving the player the the knowledge to get what recipes they want there's it's important and i feel like the I would current say, yeah. structure doesn't do enough to make you as a player feel informed about you know when you come across cookbooks like and what is exactly... it even worth it to buy them yeah. Yeah. like often you'll just find them in merchants inventories or like a random chest of animal and like you pick up the book but you're not even sure what it has on it really yeah especially because like cycling through the inventory for this stuff is a nightmare yeah and you can like read it before you buy it from the merchant but like i very i i only started doing that because of the cookbooks that is not a thing that i've ever necessarily done unless i'm looking for lore it's like if i see something useful at the merchant i will buy it if i see things that don't seem useful i'm not going to buy it and a piece of paper doesn't seem useful. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if I have not yet really engaged with the crafting system. As most probably don't. <laughs> if, no. If not for like uh, maybe a bow build or something like that. Or yeah. something and I've, highly around it. I've seen two people do item only runs and they've been uh, pretty, pretty entertaining. I highly recommend watching through Metal Commander's item only run on Twitch. I have seen I have seen one of those. Yeah. It, uh this every really only funny. craftables basically. Yeah. And it's really fun seeing the ingenuity and the stuff like that actually exists in the crafting many that I never knew existed that you could do an entire run with only them. Make the bears jump in a thousand runes all of them. <laughs> you deserve it after fighting one of these things. They Go. are just Hot, so, with the shield. Yeah, I I'm <laughs> I don't even care how much shit I'm gonna get for her having cheesed this guy by standing down in the hole. It's like I did that bears same suck. Thing. I hate I don't think anyone them. would blame you for wanting to cheese a fucking bear because these things are the worst. Yeah, I they're practically faster than torrent. <laughs> they I'm they are actually categorically I have test this. Hitboxes are ridiculous and they are more aggressive than <laughs> blood Russia? Blood bosses, I swear. Yeah, yeah. I have <laughs> expected some Putin riding on one of them. Oh dude, can we do that? Can we mod Putin riding on one of the <laughs> rune bears, please? Oh man. Can we do that? Name something like Putin do it <laughs> that would be so great shirtless Topical Putin with like an AK-47 and Elden then flying Ring. like the flag of Russia in his other hand it's so like have that and then on another bear we'll have uh, Abe Lincoln holding I don't know like an M-16 and flying <laughs> the American flag it's like that would be so good I'll be in the political commentary version of the mod <laughs> <laughs> that's uh for the future if this takes off and we can like start a patreon or something it's like that's for the patreon subscribers as you can oh yeah <laughs> you can we're get, get patrons we're gonna get patron support for the putin bear fight <laughs> Dude, three thousand dollars a month maybe for the putin bear fight and yeah. once we release it, everyone just drops support for the Patreon immediately. Oh, that would be so funny. I wouldn't even be mad. <laughs> that would be so funny. Ah, uh, that'd be great.
great. But but you get paid for me and Putin right on room bears. Hey, I, I guarantee you now that we've put this idea out into the universe, someone will get commissioned to do this. <laughs> it doesn't matter that like basically nobody is watching this. Someone will get paid to make shirtless Putin ride on rune bears. Now Cody might at this point. Just to see if it can be done. Yes. So, so the biggest question then, I think, and I and probably the main thing to get right behind crafting materials and recipes is how do you spread the recipes throughout the world? How do you make it uh, uh, I I guess I'll say engaging and natural as a player to say I want to get some recipes where do I go to do that how do I go to do that how can yeah. they approach that and have it not just be randomly assorted <laughs> so I think an easy way to do that is um, if we do like the covenant system or the NPC that specializes in X then you have like the basic version of we'll take sleep pot right or magic pot it's like i go i want the recipe for that i go to that person and i buy that and he tells me you know oh hey if you're really interested in this kind of stuff um there's a cookbook that i heard exists in x place that might have you know a higher powered version of stuff that you are interested in if you go and get that for me i'll translate it for you and you know you can have the things or whatever they're kind of like uh, the spell crafting for uh geez uh other npcs like the turtle pope where you give them the yeah like, the spell I... book and they would allow you to buy the spells yeah and we might not even need to do that it could just be hey i heard that um you know, there's this book in such and such place, but, you know, I'm too old or I, I don't want to go there myself. But if you're interested in don't doing work. it, yeah, it's like if you're interested in doing it, you should go try and find it. Uh, I think that would be enough, but it, even like magic based recipes, of course, you're going to find them in Rhea Lucaria, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the home of of magic the and sorcery. Magic in this world it's it's literally hogwarts and if you want like fire stuff because the fire pot is like one of the first things you can get then mount gelmir or the fire giants area or anywhere where there's fire monks like you know you can you can kind of go to places that make sense for it and i think that is pretty in hog and warts yes, yes. i think that's pretty intuitive <laughs> It's the kangaroo moment from Winnie the Pooh, where Kanga and Roo make kangaroo. Yes. <laughs> and what's on screen now is a whole interaction that I didn't know you could have with Melina. It's like she tells you about <laughs> Sights of Grace and what they do and where you should be going next. It's like, I didn't know that was a thing. Why... Why is talking to Melina something that happens so rarely? Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, crafting recipes should show what they craft without buying them. I'm pretty sure you can already do that, as far as I'm aware. Like, you can read the description for them and see yeah. what they unlock. Yeah. Can confirm. Yeah. That is a thing. Um, so that at least helps you decide if a cookbook is like worth it or not but also a lot of these things like if you haven't picked one up reading. you're not gonna know what a pickled turtleneck is or why yeah. you should want that and you don't even know like like the we way don't do death, re yeah. recipes are spread out like you don't know if the thing for rot is going to be in the lake of rot or in Kalid, yeah or in fucking goddamn nicholas helictry yeah like, you have no clue that's that's a whole other level is like i i want this basic thing so where should i go to get it oh well there's like three areas of the game that are really hard to get to that could correspond to that mm -hmm. and i guess that would be where like an npc would be useful as 
providing the information. Yeah. It's like maybe we could have um like this guy could be in the round table hold or like in that other area that we plan to make a a hub somewhere. Yeah. I'm a purveyor of fine recipes, and I can tell you for sure there's one over that way. Yep. Where? No, it's just that way. That's all <laughs> I know. That's all my manager told me. Yep. It's over there. <laughs> what the fuck? She talks to you here? Oh, right, because if you get out of... um. Yeah. She's taking me to the round table. Yeah. Speaking of the round table... <laughs> Yes. Shall we discuss that? Ah, oh, God. Yeah, it might be a good opportunity to do this now and like figure out that like the round table hold as um, just like a general hub for NPC. It's kind of it's weird. It's most exciting when you first get into it and you have like core in there. You got uh, your Dialos, the other guys. Yeah, Dialos, D, Gideon, Ofnir. But there's very quickly not much to go back there for. Just yeah, that. other than upgrading your weapons. Oh yeah. It's it's very meh. And NPCs by late game are like gone. Cause they're <laughs> all dead. <laughs> now nah, they're dead. Or going insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're all gone. They're just gone. And it's like, oh, okay. And like, you know, Fia. We all we all appreciate um, getting to have a a pretty woman hold us, but like, I mean, you're, you're only gonna do that. I don't know. Only a couple Not of all times. The time. <laughs> yeah, like I've, I did a run through the game where I, every time I went to the round table hold to upgrade, I also visited her to see if you like did the the health debuff thing a whole bunch of times and had her hold you and you gave her your life essence essentially what it would amount to and if it amounts to anything then boy i don't know about it yeah i mean she does have a quest line but it's i mean it's just a character quest line you don't it mostly operates outside the round table yeah and, and really that's the thing i would love to see in the round table most is like stuff that continues through the game with characters there because most just like end up disappearing from it eventually yep. <laughs> and the... it's very lonely even by mid game before the whole burning thing happens like, there's yeah. just not much reason to really check back there the emotional core of the round table hold is Rodrika and Hugh yes that's it and to be fair that's a very good emotional core but it's only one <laughs> Yes, I, I find myself like caring about them. I don't care about the round table hold. Yeah. Like Which this is a as a place doesn't it is, matter. Like it's literally the Knights of the Round Table, just Elden Ring edition in a way. What happened to them? You could not... <laughs> Oh no, that was the end of that recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> apparently. So I guess we're down in Castle Soul, but let's just keep talking about the round table. <laughs> yeah. Like I would um, very much appreciate having like the uh, recipes in BC there. Who has yeah. like you can progress through the game, he gives you more information on like you can find this here pertaining to this. Like if you're looking for offensive measures in uh ways to further murder your enemy, you can find that over this way, over that way. Or if you bring me this, I can trade you for that. Yeah. Essentially. And we were throwing around ideas of having like a secondary sort of in-world hub that NPCs could gather. And I oh, think yeah. it would be a great opportunity for when you burn the Erd Tree for NPCs to move to there and be like, hey, this place is burning down. Uh, I still support we're, we're you or I don't. Out of here. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. move to this other place. And you can find me there if you want me. Like, that would be far more interesting. And yeah. and here's um, Trisha. Need the Smith survive, please. <laughs> you must. I, I would very much like to. Yes. <laughs> I also potentially want to add another Smith or have uh, EG move to our potential 
secondary hub because man i like it is sad it is very it is. sad to have hugh like eventually just, just forget and doesn't he die by the end i don't know i can't as remember. far as i'm aware he just keeps smithing and it's heartbreaking it really is it is i i always wonder why people say that a lot of the like at least well, maybe i shouldn't say a lot but that the npcs in elden ring don't have that kind of emotional core that other games do and while for some yes this may be i think not all of them hit as hard as uh, i don't know maybe sigmar or slayer's death do in dark souls one hugh had me tearing the fuck up oh I yeah not like when <laughs> no no nah -uh. no and even when Roderick's i realized part in this it that it's he had all forgotten. very heartbreaking yeah when i realized he had forgotten i was like oh fuck Well, about the giant blacksmith, he dies. <laughs> does he? <laughs> he does. Yes. If you tell him that uh, you uh, that um, that blade pretty much or blight pretty Blythe. much went insane. It's Welsh. Then, then you had to strike him down. That um, if you tell him that, then he will appear dead later with a bunch of black flames sprouting out of him and a bunch of. Uh, the black knives uh, around his corpse. Really? That's fascinating. I yeah. did not. If you don't tell him, then he doesn't die. But if you do, I did he not did. know that. I will have to go back and check uh, one of my old playthroughs, where I did tell him that, and see mm -hmm. if that happened. But yeah, he'll be he'll be dead. <laughs> what a it bummer! Is, it is hurt and gruesome, but yes, dead. Huh. So once we're at the table starts burning and the NPCs move that giant blacksmith should the new secondary one. You should stay behind. So you should go to the new hub or visit old round table just for Hugh. It was heartbreaking knowing everyone is there in their new place and he was left behind. I do like that. I do like the idea of a new round table cropping up from the literally the ashes of the old one almost. Yeah. Especially because like, like that, if you're becoming the Elden Lord, you are moving You're, you're making this your world. own new legend. You're making your own new story that other NPCs will refer to eons yeah. down the line, maybe. You and are... I really like that, especially in a high fantasy style yes. game like Elden Ring is in comparison to uh, the Something dark like fantasy dark more so of Dark Souls. Yeah. yeah. A lot about this game is making your own legend and your own party of knights, like literally the round table, the whole Redon thing. Yes. What if we could combine like making friends with npcs and having them gather and move from like the round table to the new hub oh with certainly having the army of people riding torrents i quite adore that i think yeah like no, for one like the the uh, like the theming of building friends and your own story through taking them out of the old story in the round table to bring them to something new at whatever this new NPC hub would be. Yeah. Well, I, I like you're building your own community. You really, it would be something like you could feel like you deserve the title of Elden Lord. It's, it's by establishing these relationships. So, sorry. Yeah. Even more than that, I think because you are, um, like breaking down the propaganda and whatever, because the round table hold currently means nothing. The whole yes. thing is is it's fake. Like it, it it's you're it not runs supposed the propaganda to become machine. Yeah. yeah. You're not supposed to become Elden Lord. But if you do, then you are completely rewriting what the history of this world is supposed to be and who the major players are and whatever. So it's like I am creating a new era for the world. Come with me. Help exactly. me create this world and make it better. And I think, like, having... If we can figure can out whatever the Elden fuck Lord the flags are. Okay, so because I know Code hasn't fought the final boss, I'm going to say yes, and I'll leave it at that. 
Oh, do we need to avoid spoilers for Elden Beast? I'm okay with that. Yeah, just for now, anyway. Okay. I am I'm perfectly okay with avoiding that because I don't think we're gonna get anywhere near the end of the game discussion today. <laughs> 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 if you don't care about the game why are you here <laughs> my personal hope for this project is that like also in, in, uh, <laughs> is also in big part that I might be able to uh, 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 what's the word Coerce that some people might be able to rework Elden Ring to a point that uh, you know come become might find it really fun. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely at least you go to through do fully that for once. a couple of friends. Oh yeah, it's like I I really enjoy these types of games. I know that you are not super big on these types of games, but with the combination of seamless co-op and potentially fixing some of the systems in the game to make it more intuitive, reasonable, and fair maybe some of them would give it a shot you know it's like that is that is my hope seamless co-op moist yes it's already released moist <laughs> I've, I've sent you the release trailer for it now but let me just list off the features that we absolutely plan to make compatible <laughs> oh yeah all of if them I, <laughs> if anything else like one of the like the major goal of this mod would be making seamless call compatible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me let, let me just list off features here. If a player dies, they will respawn in the same world at the last bonfire they rested at. The session will not be terminated. Defeating enemy bosses and clearing areas no longer sends cooperators home. All fog walls and barriers that usually restrict the multiplayer zone, along with their respective teleports, are gone. All players can use Torrent, assuming they have the whistle in the session together. All map waypoints will synchronize, allowing you to navigate the world in a group easier. When one player rests at a site of grace, the world state will reset for all players. This is necessary to prevent enemy desync. Game progression events completed in online play will also progress the game in your own world. Players are free to explore the entire game map, overworld, underground, legacy dungeons, etc. together and may split up as they wish. For quality of life improvements, as the mod runs the game with easy anti-cheat disabled, you are free to use other mods, e.g. game overhauls with your friends, provided that everyone in the party has them installed. Uh, frequent disconnections resulting in packet loss and bugs with Elden Ring's implementation of easy anti-cheat are no longer yes. an issue. A yes, streamlined connection system means that cooperators can join the host from anywhere in the world. So even if you do disconnect, you can very quickly rejoin and continue where you leave, leave off. But yes, you can ride torrent. Oh no, no. For balancing, oh, no, as you no. play with three phantoms as opposed to a maximum of two in the base game, a third tier of enemy scaling has been added. If one player sits at a bonfire while others are in boss rooms, these players will be removed from the boss rooms. And be wary. <laughs> Dying during a boss battle will put your character into limbo spectating other players until either everyone in the party has been defeated or a player rests at the side of grace. You may use the arrow keys on your keyboard to switch between different spectator views. Dying in a cooperative session will afflict your player with Rot. Rot is a stackable debuff which will increase with subsequent deaths. You can only remove Rot by sitting at the side of grace. There are five different types of Rot which will be picked at random when a player dies. This has been implemented specifically to avoid one player dying over and over without any downsides, while another player stays alive to keep the enemies from respawning. Interesting. Yes, yeah. it is pure sex. Yeah. It is absolutely pure sex. Imagine I... not doing this in the same moment. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like, and of course, why is it that the modding community figured this shit out for you? <laughs> and of course, can this ban me? No. The mod prevents you from connecting the From Software's max making servers, and it uses save files different to the non-modded game. Easy Anti-Cheat is also not active when using this mod. There is no way to get banned using this mod unless you modify it with the intent of connecting to vanilla players. As this mod introduces new items not found in the base games, it uses a different save file to normal and SSD extension. Yeah. 
Man, I know what we're doing at some point. <laughs> yeah, we're totally doing Sims Go. Up. Hell yeah! Like, absolutely, and absolutely, of course, we're making our project compatible. Just bar, bar none. If it can't be made compatible, it's not worth it. <laughs> I totally agree. I I wasn't that, planning. That's a whole not even lot of saying stuff. like this is. Like the project's not worth it. That's just that's just bar minimum what needs to be done. Yeah, I I the potential of this game, with it being open world and whatever, to play with other people, is so huge. Like, it's so much fun to get a whole raiding party of people, and play together. It is. Everybody screaming at each other over Discord. It's like. <laughs> yeah. It's so Can you good. imagine fighting everyone, like with Radon, like the Radon fight with everyone in your party? That would be amazing. That's just pure fucking sex. It is. Oh yeah. Oh hey boy. <laughs> so Code, if you are ever interested in doing a a run sometime uh, with that mod, I'm absolutely would be willing. Just, just, ah, oh my God, so you know, fuck, <laughs> I can't breathe. So nice. Air, I air goes in lungs, carbon dioxide goes out. There we go. Just, just I was missing you... that second part. Yeah. It's okay. tough sometimes to remember. Yeah, it is, it is. Oh boy, so yeah, that, I, I don't even need to talk about multiplayer that much because all of it's just going to be that mod. It's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be that mod. <laughs> yeah. Base game multiplayer is kinda of shit compared to what that is gonna be. I am deeply looking forward to testing it. I will uh have quite a lot of fun with that next week. Oh indeed. The transcends even in ah. I, I hope we can potentially change your mind on that. Maybe maybe not quite on FromSoft, but just on like being able to play a game for the idea of like supporting the project if it's fun. Yeah, well, like not even for FromSoft, just like Elden Ring is a game because yeah. the base that As they provide. Do you beat the guy? Oh, hey, Jenna. <laughs> I I do eventually beat him. I think it might even be this run. Yeah. It should be this run that I beat him. Um, but yeah, yeah. He's tough. I know. He's very I tough. I know, it's very difficult. Just everything that could have been done with this game that they seem to be adamant about not doing. It's not even on top. They just, just locked it out for the sake of their token. <laughs> yeah. Well, at I, least this way, you would be experiencing a different kind of vision. I am. Except I am very cynical about From as a developer because yeah. of all of the things that they could fix and just haven't done like when they did the dark souls one remaster they had so <laughs> much potential and they were just like yeah the only thing we've added is that you can pop multiple souls at once you're welcome oh and one bonfire don't forget the one bonfire yeah which that wasn't even necessary even be a detriment if you somehow make it there and have to find your way back out yep Oh God! Yep. Yeah, it, yeah, it's I have I have a weird uh, depreciation for FromSoft. Like as artists and at, I'll say the designers are art artistically like this fight, for instance, his second phase is just pure sex in a way to look at. It is. It is a lot of fun to look at. It's a appropriately challenging fight, I think. But no, I would not once you get them rid of the particularly... some guys good game developers especially when it comes to iteration yeah they often get very good ideas that work once and then they either never seem to bring it back or destroy it in another game yeah Help. <laughs> they've done a lot of good things game development wise i would say but it's often at the expense of other things that happen especially as games continue on However, again, artists, I would say, are wondrous. Oh, yeah. I, I, their, I, their art design team is great. 
but for now anyway for the for the round table again uh yes going back to the round table um personally i think it's fine it's not stand out <laughs> yeah i've been engaging in a lot of videos uh, trying to decipher elden ring mainly for inspiration about what could be done and it's eh, it's weird the more time that passes the more the, like i don't understand i don't understand the town town reviews i don't get it no no that was especially like uh the one that stood out to me was iron pineapple as much as i respect him and he's a very important creator in the community i think it's like him just giving it a 10 out of 10 and saying that it's like really really perfect or whatever and that the open world doesn't you know suffer from any problems stuff like that it's like i don't know man i know about that i feel like you made that video before you got to end game <laughs> i feel like, I feel like that's, all, that's always what i feel like whenever i see another 10 out of 10 review like you either didn't make it to end game or you only did the necessary story content pretty much yeah and you just don't understand what like 10 out of 10 means because it's right we'll it never means it it's again. perfect it means yeah. it does like nothing else could be improved on it my my take on 10 to 10 10 out of 10 is only slightly more lenient is that when giving it 10 out of 10 you can't think of something off the top of your head that could be done to improve it but if you can think of something off the top of your head that could be done to improve it it's already 9 out of 10 or lower yeah but 10 out of 10 means that its flaws are so minor or so like like into the nitty gritty or something that you need to like literally focus on it for minutes in order to like figure oh right well I guess maybe and even then it's preference I I think if you acknowledge that a thing has flaws which basically everything does like it cannot be 10 out of 10 categorically I am I'm yeah, I, yeah very I definitely strict see that. on that. It's like, I 10 think out of 10, 10 out of 10 that is, theoretically the could exist, but I don't think it does. Except for, I think the closest game we have to a 10 out of 10 is like Tetris. And that's just because the... Are you the, saying Morbius isn't the most 10 out of 10 film, video game, book, and play that you've ever seen? I am, I am in fact saying that. I was not a fan of when he got up and screamed it's Morbin time to um fuck I was gonna think of like some bad guy that wasn't related to Marvel at all and I just can't Dr. think of Dr. Eggman yeah when he got up and, and screamed at Dr. Eggman it's Morbin time it's like that just didn't it didn't resonate with me you know <laughs> it didn't touch me way down deep in uh in in ways and that's totally fine cody that doesn't mean like you really like the game any less that's just that is like nearing perfection and yeah. that is like a hard order to achieve like perfection it's like i want to stress how much perfection is not something that comes around within <laughs> years it yeah it's perfection. like almost by happenstance and like the sheer chance of things just coming together just the right way to make a 10 out of 10 i i wouldn't give hollow knight a 10 out of 10 it is damn good one of my favorite games but i i can definitely think of ways to improve the game off the top of my head not because i haven't played it in months but when i was playing it pretty regularly like there were things i was like oh this could be improved or whatever but it is damn good one of the standouts if not like one of the best metroidvania type game actually i, I gotta keep playing hollow knight i always say i want to do it and then something happens <laughs> yeah it is like it is like for really me good. i think one of the only consistent 10 out of 10s i could say and i mentioned this before is arcane would probably be a 10 out of 10 for me as close as i can get especially for a complex project. I'm sure that that it might be 
and that, that could be uh, debated on especially for like maybe like pacing things or writing issues that people would have with the show yeah but for me personally just for everything arcane does it is Woo! it is it is really good one of the best shows to come out in recent memory i think it's like the last fucking league of legends right <laughs> it's like why did league of legends get that and star wars got all of the shit that disney has done to it it's like Was star wars ever really a 10 out of 10 <laughs> no certainly not but it was good yeah. Yeah. like episode four and episode five are good i will absolutely defend those they have problems but they are good they're yeah good i give it that nine out of ten just because they added music to some season in silence i could definitely see that i definitely could it, not, it is certainly not something i would hold against uh your ranking, of course, as I as I know for sure how, how much you enjoyed the show. Yakuza Zero is a ten out of ten. Yakuza yeah, Zero is pretty darn good. Molly kept the black blade more like Parium or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't used that. Maybe I'll get around to it at some point. He 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 do he do. The duck knows what's up. I, I shall say that. I've been surprised. Like, I can make references to things. And I'll actually get it. I'll make references and I'll understand them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that I got that fight on footage. Because that was, like, my first time doing it in one try. And I love the Malekith fight. It is so much fun. Quite nice. I think he needs just like a little bit more health, but man, that fight is so much fun. My my only uh, problem with Malagev is that I've never, I've not yet been able to experience him properly solo because I summoned on the attempt I beat him because I thought it was just Beast Clergyman. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> And I was like, mm, okay, well, you know what? Let's let's do some jolly cooperation for this. And then we ended up taking him down <laughs> on that run. It's like, oh, okay. Unfortunate. Fuck station. <laughs> I ended up summoning myself for a lot of Malekith runs after that as a way to pay it back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I quite enjoy being summoned for the Malekith fight. You're very nice. I do love how you don't even know why you're fighting Malekith until after he's dead. You're like, wait a minute. Did I get the yeah, bad ending? There is there is something to that. Oh uh, yeah, Dragon Lord Placidji Sax, aka the best endgame boss. <laughs> Farewell it like, is then. It'll be an old and lord yet. I think I've Dragon only Lord done. Dragon Lord is a boss that I, it's it blows me away. <laughs> I need to fight him more because I've only fought him once. Why have you only fought him once? I don't. One of the best bosses in the game. I know. I've done seven runs. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> uh... The run run there is a little bit nuts. And I don't understand why the Sick America is in there. I, like, for Renala, I kind of understand because there's lore or whatever. But there? What? Oh, look at that. There's a lot of dirt everywhere. Oh, yeah. Someone really needs to take a big broom. Just turn the earth tree upside down. Wish you away. Yep. Yep. Oh, boy. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Where even were we? Here. Some well, we were stuff. talking about the round table hold. Basically, I... I want to I want to throw in, I want to put in more NPCs there that you can I encounter throughout the course of the game that will stick around there for mid game, but move to that uh, in world hub area later in. You run out of the building, jump down, float on the platform, run down platforms, and line down trigger cuts and get teleported for every day. Yeah, <laughs> and surprisingly, yeah. it's still not the worst run up in a Souls game yet. True. I don't think anything will ever be worse than the Dark Souls 2 run to that uh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the frozen, the dear fuck valley. There is that, but there's also the um, what's his nuts guy that's a JoJo reference. It's like uh, the Dark hooded Dark thing Dark that no one ever bothers to fight because it's such a pain in the ass to get there and it costs oh, you. Oh, is a... it like the Dark Lurker or whatever his name is? Yeah, that might be it. I can't remember his name. I've, I've fought him once, and after that I was like, this is not worth it. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> and I banished him to like the depths of the back of my mind where I never ever look. Yeah, Dark, Dark Lurker. What about your thumb? Surprisingly, not that bad. Especially when you take into consideration fucking Deer Fuck Valley and and I suppose here Dark Lurker, even though I've never fought him. I don't even like consider the run up to um, either of the bosses in Irithyll to be that bad. It's like Pontiff isn't that bad once you've opened up the last fence thing. The yep, gate in order to get around from the uh, church. Yeah, you just like if you want to summon any of the NPCs, you have to kill things. But otherwise, you just run. And I've never had a problem Did you getting open to that it. shortcut gate back to the bonfire. Yeah, I've, I, I don't know. Pontiff's run was never a problem for me. Yeah, uh... a shortcut. <laughs> There's a, okay, okay, just oh, just no. to be clear, there's a shortcut gate near Ponty on the when you're out when you're facing away from the Ponty's boss room. Uh that is, towards that the city. Is correct. You did over not to need the to right through the whole city. Over to the right, there is a shortcut gate that you can unlock with some invisible dudes near it that will lead you back to that church bonfire that you get earlier in the level. Yeah, it takes you back to the uh not Isefka's Yorshka. You ran Yorshka's through the entire church. fucking city every time. No wonder you think it's the worst run up in Souls. Oh my god. I, I, <laughs> I I'm so sorry. I you have our deepest just oh my god. <laughs> I cannot imagine doing that every time. That is that getting up to Pontiff that way is painful the first time. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming that you just ran up, saw the boss gate, and went into it? Over the bridge and through the entire city every time? Oh, man. <laughs> On <laughs> And that for Pontiff. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. That is a nope. That is a nightmare for me, Chief. Yeah, go oh, for sure directly into the boss. <laughs> yeah. Yep, on the other side of those stairs, there's a shortcut ba shortcut gate back to the bonfire. Yeah, that courtyard in front of the fog gate, the it it is um it mirrors the stairs that you go up to get there. There's a curling staircase that goes down, and that yeah, has I'm a shortcut so sorry. gate. <laughs> I, yeah. I I can't fathom doing that, especially with how many times Pontiff Sullivan like killed me all the time. Oh yeah, me too. Holy shit! It's like learning that boss was a nightmare, and I knew where the shortcut gate was. I can't. I, uh, uh, I am so sorry. Pour one out. I I I. Pour one out. I'm apologetic for your trauma. And that might actually be worse than Horsefuck Valley. If you go, if you went through the entire city every time. Cause holy shit. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, let's see. So round table. Uh, <laughs> round table. More NPCs to meet that would like actually direct you to things that the player may feel wondering about like recipes or geez where you might be able to get certain sets of armor and things like that yeah or even more stories that you can follow i would love to write out more stories or even god if you'd like to contribute stories that npcs could have unfortunately without voice acting i suppose but if the writing is good enough 
do it, go do it with stuff. But okay, so but that's basically the round table. Other than that, I don't really have any qualms with it. The music is not fine. It's not. Uh, I don't know. It's I not forget great. the name. It's but not it's... the name. What's the name of the hub area in Dark Souls Two? With the good music. Uh, Majula. Majula. Yes, it was now. Cooked. Yeah. For some reason I'm thinking Milfanito or or because of Dark Souls too. But uh it's not Majula, which makes it worse. <laughs> that is fair. I honestly think the character selection theme is a better hub world theme than the one you get in round table. I think I would completely agree with that actually. Because like if you listen to the character selection theme again, it's so it's very nice. And it's so weird <laughs> that you only get to hear it there and like round table get something completely different yeah <laughs> do you know how funny it would be if we had legitimately pranked you though uh like that would have been the best acting i've ever done in my life right like the level of improv that either of us would have to do that. Oh man, we do not have the brain capacity in order to make a joke that runs that long so naturally. Oh, that would be so like, funny though. And like making Holy up a precision shit. alternate path through the stairway with like invisible dudes. What the fuck? <laughs> oh man, that is amazing. <laughs> Yes, we did not. I'd actually feel you. smart for doing that, but no, 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 no. no Unfortunately, pranks, we are not lying to you. That is, the, yeah. that is the shortcut. You, you accidentally suffered way more than you needed to, and you have my <laughs> deepest condolences. Oh God. Okay. So, God, the amount of damage this thing does. Yeah. Gargoyles wacking his computer box. need to be rebalanced somehow. It's like, they do way too much damage. But I think that just feeds into the vigor is the and new That's ADP. just the endgame boss thing. Or like yeah. endgame balancing thing in general. And I think they have... Why is the double least... gargoyle fight a thing? Why is double crucible night a thing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be totally fine with the double gargoyle fight. If not for the fact that poison clouds damage you as well as inflict poison status buildup. Why? And you don't get a warning when it's coming. Why? Don't you love how they did the double kind of gargoyle -esque thing so well with demon princes and then just threw it on its face for double gargoyles? I think That's even it. the double gargoyles fight in like Dark Souls 2 is better. <laughs> and that's sad. That fight is shit. It is. Oh my god. Why did Dark Souls 2 do it better? We talk about the ganks in Dark Souls 2, and meanwhile, Elden Ring is like, well, you see, what if we put two boss enemies in the same room? And that was just it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Spirit Ashes, you can deal with it. Shut up. And I don't even like running across gargoyles in the world. Like, I think you could make a justification for them in Landell. Like, maybe. But I don't like it. I'd much rather them be exclusively bosses that guard, like, very important things. Yeah. But nah. Nah. They I just... really want to, like, swap, swap up that double Garko fight in the underground just completely. I'm I've totally down to that. I'm trying to workshop for a while about um, I could only being one gargoyle, but it's. How do I explain this? It's like a nebula cloud, in the same way, like a uh, in the same vein of Estelle's particle attacks. But the gargoyle just made of that, and it, its whole its whole thing is like filling the arena steadily with this. Um. Like this solar system around you that just keeps building and building into the course of the fight. 
There's potential. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely something. I don't know. There's there's possibilities. And that arena is huge. So, like, yeah. we could put all kinds of things in there instead. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, we that's just one it... idea I've, I've been, like, trying to figure out. But yeah. there's so many things you could do with any boss in this game in order to change them up. We could put a dragon encounter there, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. Like... I, there's there's so much potential for that area and even for double gargoyles even if we left it if we just created a harmless particle effect projectile that preceded the poison that would oh, yeah. make it so much better doing the twin like doing the demon princess thing yeah yeah Let's see. <laughs> it would it would be so much better I don't feel like there's too much more about, to say about the round table itself. Agreed. Um, without getting into specifics of what NPCs could be there. And I think that can just come from necessity as specifics of development are yeah, uh, as, put through in later. As we work on developing the project and you know trying to come up with do we want another hub area? Do we want NPCs? Yeah, Where do we want we them to be? And lock down a round table. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's lots of things that can be done. You just have a huge hate boner for Nephilim. I I I will give it to you, but I don't understand because I I find her interesting. To be fair, she also uh, hasn't been able to... Interesting. <laughs> they also haven't been able to uh, like get any quests out of Nephilim. Like They yeah. said something interesting at the start of the game and they just sat in the round table being depressed about their dad or something. Yeah. That would definitely be a... She's a calling major... you out for your muscle girl thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the rest of the <laughs> Okay, it's you didn't need to call me out like that. I know that I'm a depressed fuck, but still. The problem is you find her randomly, then you get a quest about her, you don't even know her name. The guy wants you to end her. Yeah. Selvis' whole thing is interesting. Then you need to figure out she's randomly under a bridge in that swamp town. I think uh, I don't know I feel like a lot of players will find Nephili in the swamp place first before they met Celibus I mean I haven't found I hadn't found Nephili at all in general, so I have no idea where she even is. <laughs> uh, she starts in Stormvale. Oh, really? Yep. That's the first yep. place that she is. I, I she just is, uh... must have met her at some point and then just completely forgot. Yeah, she's in a small room in, like, the courtyard pathway that you can take. Huh. As opposed to going through the castle. If you want to suffer, you can just go through the courtyards. And uh, she's off in a room... I think it's in the same section where there's the uh, golden seed tree. And she's in there with a banished knight that she's killed. And she's like celebrating that banished knight as a warrior and saying, you fought well, but you know, you're dead yeah. now. <laughs> Sorry, bitch. So then after you figure out she's definitely and you talk to her dad, you don't end her and she ends up depressed in the basement for the entire game. At least for Kinda. her. Anyway. Kinda, yeah. I Like I said, I don't know what the flag is to make her leave the basement of depression. I, I don't understand. I can definitely understand... Oh, sorry, that, that was a weird segue. I can definitely understand not liking that character, especially if they do nothing the entire game. After yeah. doing like a weird fetch quest kind of thing. For sure. 
<laughs> yeah. What is that question? Like? You you're really just upset that there was a muscle girl, a tan muscle girl in Elden Ring that didn't do fucking do anything, and you couldn't I even mean, romance them. The fact that you can't romance her is is a problem. <laughs> I I imagine that a lot of people find her hot. I don't even want to think about all of the rule 34 stuff that exists of her but it's like the champion armor headpiece i think is so horrendously ugly that it ruins her like hotness <laughs> it's like i don't know i'm all for muscle girls gimme gimme but i like when you're wearing that thing e e like yeah, my assumption is right. She hates that quest line and that character because it's a waste. <laughs> it is it is definitely a waste of potential. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, how do we fulfill the muscle girl dreams in a way that makes the quest line sensible? That is a good question. Trying to even edit the quest lines in from games is so painful. Spaghetti code. It's basically just doesn't a bunch even of if else statements it. related to a whole bunch of things. It is. And it's like horrifying how easily they can get screwed up. I, I th really I think hope... we're gonna have to do it though, because Nephilim's kinda left in the dust. Yeah. Finding out what triggers her to move into the various stages would be good. And, like, if you can get her out of depressed phase, having her... Even having her be able to be summoned for more bosses and stuff, like, that would be way better. It would actually feel like she's doing a thing and supporting you and your goals to... Imagine if you could actually build a relationship with her and get her out of her depression... <laughs> And help yeah. her become the next ruler of Limgrave. Let's go. Yeah. That'd be cool as fuck. Unfortunately, it couldn't be done with voice, but I honestly think that would be, like, a great, like, jab at, like, a sort of <laughs> dating mini game, you know? <laughs> with an actual, like, solid conclusion of helping a person better themselves and yeah, uh, rise to the occasion of need in the land. I... I definitely don't understand, I guess from a like personal aspect, why she's so depressed. It's like she killed some dudes that her dad had out killing people and she was banished from helping her dad and stuff and she's like really depressed about that for some reason, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. NPC quest lines in this game in general, I think, like could use some help in some cases. Yeah. I didn't even know you could find corn in here. <laughs> uh, this was my first time finding him here. God, his neck is... What the fuck is happening with his neck? It is horrendously broken. But honestly, oh, no. mine would be the same if I had to wear that wheel all the time. Oh my god. He's actually a snake. This is... Zori asked his long lost brother. Holy shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, I can't slander Zori ass like that because they actually have a quest that makes sense. Yeah, pretty much. It's understandable why she gets depressed. Yeah, literally. <laughs> oh boy. But so, yeah, moving on uh, from round table. Round table hold NPCs in general just pretty much need a lifting of the ways you can interact with them, content and things that they can help you direct in the world. And if we can make it so that you can build your own round table in the world itself, that'd be great. But yeah, let's move on. Yeah. That's just a way to summarize. 
so I will I will give you a choice then. Do you want to talk about some area designs or do you want to talk about some mechanical stuff? Let's go mechanical stuff because mechanical stuff is always fun. Yes. So I have I have a list of mechanics um, that I wanted to talk about in the good and bad of them, starting with guard counters. I really like this addition. I think it elevates a shield build to being useful again where like in Dark Souls 3 by late game if you were using a shield it was a detriment to you unless and, it was the stamina shield and you never used it yeah and now you can like block hits and actually do something about it that's so great it is I love that addition. I think some of the animations for them are really, really slow. Like, uh, Colossal Swords should be slow. But, like, some other ones really shouldn't. Halberds are painfully slow. Painfully. They have good range, but it's so slow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would appreciate guard counters a lot more if they felt worth it for their uh, relative speed. Yes. Especially on, like, some slower weapons. Yeah. Because at and some like... point, it can feel like a detriment to use them. Yeah. And figure out when you would use them, because you're, like, relieving yourself of a block in order to attempt uh, a punish that you're probably going to get hit for in your windup. Yeah. Yeah maybe i guess that could be balanced by like increasing poise during or hyper armor during the animation we mm -hmm. could maybe tool around with that but absolutely i think like scaling the damage appropriately to the speed of the animation makes a lot of sense yeah. it's like i should be doing a considerable amount of damage when i am slamming a motherfucker with a giant hammer don't worry we got some we got some ideas for Colossal. Oh yeah, we we will oh, yeah. definitely I, make I, colossals I useful. I talking about anything except colossals for like a day. Yeah, um, we had a good several hour some, conversation about them. I just am certain watching you uh, stream some things, so don't worry. It is absolutely guaranteed that we're going to be doing stuff with colossals and hopefully fun things. Yes, I I really like the ideas that we have. I hope we can implement them as well as we'd like to. But yeah, the goal is to make them viable because right powerful. now in vanilla game they just are not like, unless you're doing very specific things with them like the crouch spoke meta yeah yeah but good luck fighting you know malekith with the uh, ultra great sword it is it is a painful thing to do <laughs> regular trash mobs yeah any of the ones that are like super spammy and very fast fucking royal revenants Ooh, jesus it. fuck royal revenants are awful holy shit it's could it be it's sword gideon off near the all-knowing <laughs> oh, i'm so happy let's go <laughs> i'm just gonna give this man an education from a distance oh uh, yeah the power of a college education Yes. Fired at high velocity. <laughs> Pretty much. There are a few things there are a few things that give me as much simple joy in this game as watching Gideon be absolutely destroyed. Yeah. See, there's the sigil. Yep, there it is. This <laughs> is just fucking funny. Oh, yeah, we got ideas for Gideon, too. We got, like, multiple, actually, that we're kind of deciding between. Yeah. We have a lot of ideas for distributing the content, especially unique fights. So, so hey, Ash, you yeah. see those Sorry. circles on the ground there? Ooh. Ooh. Just, just point Ooh. that out. Okay, okay. Given I what see. we talked I about last time. For. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just point that out. Those are some <laughs> interestingly placed circles. <laughs> Yeah, I was so hyped the first time that I came to his fight. 
I got. <laughs> I'm not going to say yes or no, because there are some things that I think I would love to have a surprise. Oh yeah. As we keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I... Wait. Uh, you were you were saying something there, and I never interrupted you with the call for Sir Gideon Bopnir the Barn Bull Boeing. Yes, Sir Gideon Bopnir, the Get Fucked, bop, the Bop Boeing. <laughs> I Mikolash. I was so hyped when I came I we're not making him like Mikolash. I uh, hate Mikolash. God. Oh son say cause him. I didn't the fucking sign. hate Mikolash. <laughs> but Mikolash, I was so hyped when I came up to Gideon. I don't like how he isn't currently, but I do like the idea. I like the idea of chasing a man. The like yes. Lovecraftian nightmare that shifts and spins around you yes and especially it feels with like the potential that he can mad. control it yes i like, like that i don't that like cool. how the fight actually fucking operates <laughs> agreed especially for how much of a meme his dialogue is yeah God, i man. i love his dialogue and his voice me. acting but the fight itself is shit ah a hunter is a hunter even in a dream yes <laughs> I was mad men. Okay. Right. I keep interrupting. What the hell am I doing? So, what were you saying before Gideon? God, I forget. Gideon. I thought it was going to be a super hype fight. Like, showing up and seeing him there, I was like, oh shit. It's, it's Gideon. Gideon. <laughs> and then he hits you with the whole, ah, I knew you'd come. Knew you'd come. Like, Stand before the Elden Ring. Become, become Elden, Elden Lord. Lord. I know deep in my bones, no one can become an Elden Lord. Not no even man. you. No man can kill a god. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, god. that's when you say, bitch, that's why I have the rune of death. But. Yeah. yeah or liquid like, hot soup right into his eyes. Yeah, I was so hype about this boss fight. And I beat him on the first try on my first run because he has like <laughs> 7,000 health at best. And I was like, did Dude. anyone not beat him on the first try? I swear. I, I at least it felt that there were a couple like of people. Did. At least it felt like you did. Like once you understood what was actually going on and you could just keep up in his face as a melee character, especially, and even his range, it's, it's not even a contest. <laughs> My God. Okay, so I can't remember. What was, what was going on before Gideon? Like, we were talking about colossal weapons. We were talking about mechanics and guard yeah, counters mechanics. specifically. Yeah. Basically if... boosting the guard counter effectiveness and increasing its hyper armor. No, sorry. <laughs> no before Gideon. Before we got into Gideon. So yeah, mechanics and what after that? Uh, let's see. So guard counters, and I want to talk about memory stones. Because I want to acknowledge, as much as we're going to bash some of the things in this game, I want to acknowledge the good stuff. I think memory stones is a really good system to I do control think so. how many spells you can have. I do, I do quite like it a lot. I don't really have any qualms with it, especially with them having a significant place that you know where to look for them. The only real problem I have with memory stones, or rather, like, what you go through to get them, is that it's only applicable uh, God, for mages, literally, yes. because it's, its only purpose is spell slots. Yes. What I would love to do is adding a secondary reward to the rises for mainly builds but i have a hard time figuring out what that might be yeah we'll have to workshop some ideas um because right now melee builds can just avoid the rises and that's fine yeah but it would be nice yeah. if there was a tangible reward for them that they could actually utilize and like you know do something with 
a few spells that use strength. Maybe. Is it possible? Because as far as I'm aware, the uh, requirement menu for spells only goes through faith, it's... intelligence, and arcane. Yeah. But uh, there's a potential. Maybe we can like add some item type things that you need strength or dex to use. And yeah. Uh, yeah, buffs are definitely definitely something. It's like we can check, here's we an can item that costs out, like, FP to use, but like it magically attune with... crafting recipes there, like stuff for FP because FP is also useful for uh, melee builds. Oh, Even that's an idea. Yeah. Something you can craft. Yeah, that would work pretty well, actually. Bigger stem and strength, yes, because your gun is a heavy build with uh, bull goat and UGS. Basically not being. Yeah. However, you did use FP because you had uh, your weapon arts that you wanted to keep using and the buff spells that you would use later. But way later, so we'll take that out of the equation for now. I think something like FP, if we, it would help uh, Ashes of War being dependent on FP not feel as restrictive, especially also with concentration. Yeah. And also, like, it's it's a good reward for mainly builds because it allows you to do cool things that require FP. Yeah, for regular mobs, you really don't need it. Yeah. But just in general, like magically attuned crafting recipes, things that you can use that things that use magic but you can use as a melee build, I think would work quite well. Yeah, there's there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot that you can do with it. It's like mm -hmm. in the rise you get a memory stone and you get a recipe. And it's like oh, I can make this meat thing that we can like recolor in Photoshop and when I make it, it uses FP, but it gives me a huge buff to strength or something for, you know, yeah, 30 seconds. And if we or can, maybe we can even make it like a minute or whatever. If we can have spells that require strength or like a melee stat, I would love to do that. I'm not sure if it might be janky. Like, say we couldn't show <laughs> with the UI that it required buff. strength. I feel like we would just have to do something like um, like show it in the item description like this spell requires this much strength yeah Ta -da. so it would um, be a little bit janky but I think the benefits of having spells accessible like some variety of spells accessible for melee builds would be nice definitely and I, I think that one particular set of incantations works really well for that bestial ones oh yeah 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 the sacred seal throw the that. rock <laughs> Yeah, the sacred seal for that already scales on strength. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. If we can have strength buff for like the beast incantations. Yeah, so that'd be that great. would be dope if we could make that work. It is it is unfortunately pretty restrictive. Um especially being locked behind finding the death route. Mm -hmm. It's like very eh. It is technically meta to use with the Colossals in PvP, but that's mainly because it gives you a ranged poke. And, you know, that's always good. Uh, it doesn't even make sense that it needs magic, considering you're literally chucking stones out of the ground. Yeah. And as a strength character, isn't that something you feel like you should be able to do? Absolutely. I mean, Horlu does it. He doesn't use magic, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, not really. And and like the beast dealing incantations have relatively low faith requirements, so I think they had the idea of a strength build that utilizes a little bit of faith to, you know, do these more physically based type things. You have to make the sacred seal like lean into that better. Mm -hmm. Make it scale a lot better. I don't know something. Something they just they did not quite get that. Not quite, but I feel like we could do that. Because yeah, you have the attribute required here for 
in faith in Arcane. And sadly, they don't show the melee stats, but I'm completely fine with uh, having the requirement be in this description, considering you can see that here. Yeah. If you swap the yeah, if you swap the menu. Well, I think something that you could do is have spells that are skewed towards being, you know, assisting strength builds or assisting dex builds, and then just like oh excuse me i had like a burp thing come up how wooed <laughs> just having them have a really low faith requirement and having the sacred seal scale off of strength really really well like then it really benefits you to it, find those it. spells but yeah. to have strength be your main stat that you level up Oh, yeah. It's also kind of funny for magic builds to be using the BCO spells because <laughs> your guy that usually has like two strength is just chucking rocks on the ground. It's very weird. Yeah. yeah. And so that... I think that's definitely something to look into. If not, something that we should look into. As it helps uh, that with that disparity between uh, strength builds and finding spell utilities and actually gives you reason to use it if you'd like to yes which would be so so lovely max speed stat I'm not even Is that doable maybe it's got to be doable because it would probably do something like increase the game time for the player character on attacks uh, I'm maybe? not sure we could get it. I'm not sure we could get it to show in the menu at all, though, unless we tied it to an already existing stat, like maybe dexterity. God, yeah. that would... <laughs> oh boy, bleed builds with an attack speed increase. Oh God, cancer, <laughs> cancer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I there's potential there but i think in a lot of cases i just want to increase the attack speed like the speed of the attack animations anyway mm -hmm. like everything else in this game moves as fast as bloodborne stuff and yet you're still swinging at dark souls 3 speeds so worse in the case of colossal weapons yeah absolutely worse i would love i would love and this is more of a, a wish that i don't think could really be done i would love for the skill with a weapon to increase as you level the relevant stat. Like maybe in like more friendly game terms, like the cancel windows are shortened or increased, I should say, so that you can chain between attacks better. Yeah. But just in general, the idea of actually becoming more proficient with your weapon as you level a stat over just basic damage. I really yes. like. Maybe we could even tie that to upgrading the weapon. It's like the sort of because um, stuff like Neo, right? I remember very distinctly in Neo 2 that there's a familiarity stat with each weapon and as you level it up it buffs something. I can't remember what. But I kept thinking it would be really cool if you started with really bad um, animations as your attack animations, but they get better and better as you get more experienced. And I don't think there's a way to functionally do that in the Souls games. But maybe we could speed up your animation based on the upgrade of the weapon itself. And so as you upgrade it, and you would in theory only upgrade weapons that you really want to take to the full way, um, you know, that's that's sort of a rough way of mimicking that idea. I think per weapon, it might uh, actually introduce a sort of opposite effect in that the weapons that you may want to experiment with feel a lot worse than the that weapons you already have. That is very And considering true. it's like general familiarity, though it may be, or, or and general experience, though it may be less uh, accurate, 
to not do it per weapon, I think it would be more fun to do it per stat. Or just like with your character itself. Considering you yeah. can already pick up and you know every weapon in the game. As long as you have the stat requirement for it. Yeah. And I, I very much like being able to swap between a whole bunch of weapons and experiment with stuff. I'm very mm -hmm. much a test all the things kind of person. So, I definitely like that idea.